Welcome to the session of the AgriBility National Training Workshop Encore webinar series. And our topic today is making lemonade when outreach events hand you lemons. Our presenters are Laura Ackerman and Dee Jepson from Ohio AgriBility and the Ohio State University, and also Tani Larson from Kansas State University. For those that might not be familiar with AgriBility, we are sponsored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. We focus on issues of disability for anybody that's involved in production agriculture. Every one of the agribility projects around the country is a partnership between a land grant university and at least one nonprofit disability services organization. Currently, there are 21 funded state projects around the country and several non-funded affiliate projects. The National Agribility Project is led by Purdue University's Breaking New Ground Resource Center, and our partner on that grant include Goodwill of the Finger Lakes, Osteoarthritis Action Alliance, AgriSafe Network, Colorado State University, and Washington State University. You can find out more about AgriBility and view over 140 other archived webinars on agribility.org. I'd like to introduce our presenters. Dr. G. Jepson is a professor at The Ohio State University and is also the program director for Ohio AgriBility. She also gives leadership to the OSU Extension Agricultural Safety and Health Program, dedicating the last 30 years toward occupational safety and health issues. This combination has served her well in her professional involvement with the agricultural community. Laura, Laura Ackerman is the Disability Services Coordinator for Ohio AgriBility and Ohio State University Extension. She's a two-time Ohio State University alum with degrees in English and Rehabilitation Services. She presents workshops on accessibility, gardening with arthritis, farming with a disability, agritourism, and other disability-related issues for Ohio AgriBility and OSU Extension. Tawny Larson is a project consultant in the Kansas State University Department of Biological and Agricultural Eng Engineering. Tony serves as the state coordinator for the ROPS rebate program through the Northeast Center for Occupational Health and Safety. She previously served as a project coordinator for Kansas AgriBility and is a QPR certified gatekeeper instructor. So at this time, I'm going to turn things over to our presenters, and then I'll check back with you during the Q&A period. Thanks, Paul. We appreciate that. Um, I'm Laura Ackerman from Ohio State University. I'll let my colleagues introduce themselves. Great. I'm Dee Jepson from Ohio State. And I'm Tawny Larson with Kansas State University. And when we originally created this for um, National Training Workshop in March. We had two colleagues who also helped us do that. So we kept their name on it because they did a lot of contribution. Kendra Martin from AgriBility Pennsylvania and Leilani Carlson from Maine AgriBility. Okay, so to get us started, while we were in person, we um, we used a polling technique, and so today we're going to use chatting techniques. So if you're um, you've got your chat bar opened up, um, this is this is what we're interested in learning, um, because we've all done these outreach events, and um, we're out there trying to promote our projects, or maybe um, demoing different things for our farmer groups. So we want to know how, you know, how do we accomplish our goals to do education, networking, assistance, and marketing? That's the big umbrellas of agribility. But why do you do it? So for reasons, um, this is why we're using the chat box. We want to know um, why do you go and attend an exhibit or an outreach event? So maybe in your state or in your location, you always have that go-to event that you're at or maybe there's an event that you'd like to get into. Um, so we'd like to just kind of see some ideas of where you promote your agribility topics. And we see some shy people not, maybe they're still typing. We're gonna share a lot of information of where we 
prevent or not to prevent where we present our information. And so we just kind of like to see as we're sharing where you are. Nobody does any outreach events. That's why they're with us. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit more of a background too, and I won't steal Laura's thunder because she'll want to share this. The way we came up with this presentation was that, you know, sometimes we're at an outreach event and things go horribly wrong um, for different reasons, you know, like maybe no staff show up or maybe no participants show up or, you know, they, they you're there at the wrong day you're there at the right time, but everybody else is not, or maybe you have a horrific event um, that was not, um, you know, the weather has affected it, um, or it just wasn't publicized well enough, right? And then um, you have a mismatch. So this is how we came up with this idea. It's like, so what do you do when things kind of go wrong or, you know, your program deals you lemonades or lemons? All right, so we have some folks that go to the dairy breakfast, go to ag expos, they want to go to ag expos, maybe FFA conventions, um, or here's a good one, job fairs and high school transition events. Those are unique places to take the agribility message. Okay, that gives us a little bit of backgrounding. Um, yeah, definitely. Paul says that we need to cover both the agriculture and the rehabilitation events. So in our state, we might partner with um, some of our vocational rehabilitation groups. They'll invite us to conferences that involve site impairment. And yeah, here we are talking about farming things, but we're also talking about um, rehabilitation and um, assistive technology as it would affect the disabling com disabled community. So... All right, Laura, take it from here. Thank you guys for that input at the beginning. You're muted, Laura, sorry. Thank you, thought I unmuted myself. Um, so for every event, whether it's indoors and outdoors, and based on our pictures, we have a combination of in and out. You should always have a tablecloth, um, either a branded tablecloth, which it looks like Kansas and Ohio have them, or Maine and Pennsylvania. Oh, sorry. Ohio and Pennsylvania have branded tablecloths, and then Maine and Kansas have table runners that they can drop over top of a tablecloth. Um, if you have banners, project and partner brochures, business cards, information and referral forms, we have some contact cards that we've gotten from NAP that we have adapted, but it collect some information for us. Just this year, we bought some Lucite document and brochure holders and it made it look so much more professional. It was really clean. Um, I really I really enjoyed using those. Bungee cords and zip ties. We go through so many zip ties and bungee cords. Pens, note paper, duct tape, clear packing tape. Lots of things to attach with. String, rope, wire, and then scissors or a knife to cut cut through those zip ties and other things. Clamps, binder clips, rubber bands, branded post-it notes, which I know is something Kansas have that I'm pretty jealous of. Candy, candy to go with your prize wheel, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, dongles, adapters, and chargers for your devices. I would also add power strips. We do an outdoor show and we take several power strips and the power strips we use have USB ports in them also. So that's helpful if someone just has a charger cord and not a plug. Ziploc bags to put things in, or when it's raining and you want to save your stuff, name tags, agribility branded clothing, hand sanitizer, and then for specific events, brochures, assistive technology, and resources that are focused on the type of event you're having. We have some pictures here. Up in the top left is Kansas Agribility um, with a couple of, they've got a prize wheel, a huge piece of equipment in the background, quite a few things on, on the table to look at. Maine Agribility has a nice um, trifold poster with some brochures. Pennsylvania has, looks like a tractor and quite a few other things that are very eye-catching, a big banner. And then on the bottom right is Ohio Agribility, one of our trifold bolt folders. It looks like uh, the red in the middle would be some ice packs that we hand out, quite a few fact sheets and maybe some other giveaways. So in case of an emergency, as Dee had alluded to, 
2021 was um, Farm Science Review in London, Ohio, was what inspired this whole presentation. So last week was our Farm Science Review, and it was great. It was great. Last year, we had a Farm Science Review that we, we, planned on, we planned for it, honestly, for a year, but a good six months goes into it. We had horrendous weather. We had extreme winds. We had flooded ex exhibit space. We had one staff member who um, injured her leg during setup. Another staff member who was seven and a half months pregnant, and we had to force her to stay home for most of the show. And then we had a vendor that was very ill, and actually we lost him a week or two later. So that is Farm Science Review. That is not actually a picture of it because I think it would have looked a lot wetter last year, but it's a three-day show. And last year, Tuesday was just, it wasn't too bad, as I recall. Wednesday, we got in at 7.30 in the morning to find um, several inches of standing water under our tent. And it just kept coming. It felt like a hurricane. They actually canceled the show, which was the first time in decades that they'd canceled it. And then Wednesday, we came back to not so much standing water, but 35 to 40 mile an hour winds all day. So it was just, it was, it was Yeah. It was an experience, so this year was fantastic. So based on that, what's in your go bag? I imagine most of us who worked at Farm Science Review this year had a go bag or two. I had rain boots. My go bag had a full extra change of clothes, extra everything. Um, we didn't get much rain this year, but I was not taking any chances. Pants, socks, shirts, sweatshirt, underwear, winter coat, warm hats, gloves, all of it, footwear. Sneakers, sturdy boots, rain boots. I said hip waders. Um, one of the women who has a lot to do with organizing the extension part of the farm science review. She and I were talking a few weeks before and I just made a joking comment. I said, I don't have any hip waders, but I'm, when I see the, the weather forecast for that, I might just have to go over and get some. And she said, you know, I think my husband has some. So I think those are going in the car. Uh, umbrellas and ponchos, headwear, hats, helmets, visors. And I would say not only ball caps, sun hats, um, winter hats. I was wearing a winter hat last year by the third day with gloves. I wear safety glasses, sunglasses, take blankets, rain gear, winter clothing, and cash because some vendors don't take credit cards and you might want to go buy lunch or you might just find that the power, they don't have power for it or they don't have a good internet connection. But I, like I said, I had a go bag in my car, but I was prepared to take it in, but I never needed to take it into the into the property, which I was very grateful for. Thank you, Laura. That was a great list. <laughs> and also just to remind everybody in the chat, we have put a link to all this information. So if we're going too fast, you don't have to try and keep notes and we'll have it available. And we'll even add some of your comments in before we post it to the that website. So lots of stuff to cover here. So um, staffing your outreach events. So sometimes it feels like, I think, you know, we just have to do everything. We have to be there every moment for setup and we plan it, but we all have partners. And so I think it's uh, important to remember that you can ask your partners to help set up and help man the event. Um, Lots of times there's university or extension personnel where you have a nonprofit partner. So somebody could help and come in and assist. A lot of um, different projects have OTs and PTs also that um, in their nonprofit organization, they're great to help you out at different shows. Up here in the upper left is Maine Agribility and they're doing AT demonstrations and um, they, I believe that um, state actually does use a lot of OTs. And so also here on the right is some um, agribility customers. They love to go talk and tell their story. And so don't be afraid to get some of your customers involved. And um, let's see, down here um, in the lower left is Penn State. And I believe there might be some other state um, representatives there as well. So you know, just as many people, depending on what the show is, what is um, appropriate for that actual, um, I guess, the audience that you're going to have there is really what you need to think about. So uh, physical therapists, a lot of groups have volunteers as well. And don't forget your healthcare professionals, both rehab 
is great to come in and help. And even if it's just for a little bit of time, I think it really takes the stress off of us as well as it represents and makes the exhibit a lot more interesting. Laura, can you switch me? There you go. Thank you. So thinking about who your partnerships are, you know, of course, everybody in their grant has their set partnerships, but don't forget about collaborating with other SRAPs and in nearby states. The I think the really muddy picture at the beginning might have been the four state farm show that we have here in Kansas, but it is close to Missouri as well. And in the past, we have collaborated with them to have a booth and because a lot of people come it's the four state farm show. So they come from other states, including Missouri, that has a project. And also, um, they just, I, I believe Kendra set up this um, top photo here that is in the fall. And so just kind of keep in mind, we can do some themes. I think we have some other photos later on that, especially fall events, people really like to see the theme. And it's not just, um, you know, straight agribility. It's like making it a little bit more inviting for people to come into your tent um, or into your exhibit. And that's also what Maine did down below in this photo is, I believe um, Dick with Maine Agribility is a train enthusiast. And so they set up um, this train and, you know, you never know who's going to walk by, right? And whether he ran it or not and the sound of it, it draws people in. So think about different hobbies or interests that you all have um, and who your partners have and have them come in and, and share some of that. So I, it's interesting, though, they did put some healthcare, um, common health issues around the train track. And so it just gives you an opportunity to talk about those, anything to break the ice. And and Tawny, if I could just add that top box that says collaborate with other state agribility projects. Mm -hmm. um, this was farm aid 2019, I believe. Maybe it's 2018. It's 18 or 19. And the bottom line, guys, is if farm aid ever comes into one of your states or in, near your community, um, it is an ideal place to partner and then bring in other strap, straps that could help program with you. So be on the lookout for that, not just your own local events, but this one was great. It was Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia all joined together for that. That's Lisa, Kendra, and I don't know who the other two are, but yeah, three of them, mm -hmm. Kendra in her white pants, God love her. <laughs> I would never pull that off, but that's Kendra. So who's your audience? We've talked about places you're going to be. Um, at the very beginning of the chat, we talked about some different topics, but you could have just a general agriculture audience. We definitely have some special events for women in ag, veterans in ag, um, caregivers. That's something that Ohio AgriBilly talks about a lot. Young and aging farmers, and then underserved populations. We've just listed a few. There's so many, depending on where you are. Hispanic, Anabaptist, or Amish, African American, Native American, and lots of others. It could be an Americans with Disabilities Act or disability focused vocational rehabilitation um, audience, health or safety, and then ag industry and commodity groups. Early, so January of this year, I actually presented to the Ohio Land Improvement Contractors Association, and it was great. It was actually something that came from an intern, um, someone who had interned in either NAP or Indiana Agribility, that he'd been approached at the National Conference by Ohio, and he said they have one, so it was great. Rural health professionals and advocates. Um, Ohio has a rural health association. I'm on the board for that. Dee and I both presented at the rural health conference this summer on different topics, um, always with an agriculture focus stakeholders and partners, and then farmer garden shows or farmers markets. So in our pictures in the bottom left picture, we have pictures of some veterans um, sitting around looking at a workshop. And then on the right is a poster that we actually made for, for, for Ohio to take to NTW, I believe it was 2017 or 18, because we thought, well, all the other agribility groups, we know what we do, but we want to tell you a little bit about Ohio. And this poster is always a hit. I don't pull it out for the ag shows, but I take this when I go and do a rural health conference 
or some sort of a disability related conference, because a lot of them are not agriculture people and they're amazed. I'm amazed by it. Who knew we were number one in Swiss cheese? I think that I'm very proud of that. But it's really, and also 4-H was founded in Clark County, Ohio, which I'm especially proud of. But it's just fun to put that out there because if you're not involved with agriculture, or even if you live in a small town, but if you live in a city, you may not realize how many people in Ohio or in America or in your state work in agriculture. So it's a really fun poster to make. I really enjoy this one. I always enjoy taking it out. And some specific supplies per event. Always have brochures, um, arthritis, back health. Those are booklets from National Agribility. Those are great booklets and people are always excited to get them. Arthritis in gardening or farming with arthritis. Veterans and youth, there are different, definitely specific resources and booklets about those. For assistive technology, take technology, take out what you've got. For your ergonomic tools, vision and hearing technology and displays, all sorts of different gloves. Um, starting last year, Ohio, Ohio really started building a assistive technology learning lab. And it was great. We have some different creepers, some seating options some small things that go in the back of my Prius and some big things that we need D's big farm truck to transfer it around, but they really attract people when you put them out because it, it's eye grabbing and they come in and see it. And you always want people coming in your tent and some resources, master gardener programs, veterans resources, equipment and tool handout. That's something that Ohio has. And I can put a link to it on here. We have a farming tool handout and a gardening tool handout, also a kitchen tool handout from another webinar we did. And then funding and financial information, always helpful to have all those types of things. Okay, so here's some more chances for some audience involvement. We don't want you all falling asleep out there. So think about when you do take out your display or if you're at an educational event or even if you're just giving a presentation, um, how do you engage with the attendees that you're trying to reach out to? So can we get some ideas um, put in the chat box again? Maybe you use an icebreaker. Maybe you use some sort of a, you know, uh, Laura gave it the example of that, the poster that had our ag commodities on there. I mean, we've got some great ideas we're going to share with you, but what do you all do? Where's that hook that you're going to get people to walk by your your uh, display, your table, come to your session, Any, anything there? Because we learn from each other too. Like what all do you have? We mentioned have to have your brochures and maybe good candy. Okay. Paul says we're able to have a tractor with a life essentials lift. That absolutely gets the you know people to stop and look and especially when you offer rides and you put people up high and then you, that that brings people over that's always a good one so someone's here from the i'm here from the government and i'm here to help you that's that one can work right maybe you're saying it tongue in cheek i love it brochures and candy okay well that if you think of some more, go ahead. Here's one, a jar guess and a chance to win $20. Oh, cash always speaks. If you can guess the number of candy corn in the mason jar, that should bring some people over. Good. All right. So the rest of our session is what do we use as the hook and how, you know, we've kind of thought through and we've, um, we're using four different agribilities to, to give some examples. So um, hopefully after this session, we didn't say one of our objectives. One of our objectives is for you to be able to then um, put together a display, have some fun with it, um, with some confidence um, that you're, you not only got the right message, but you're bringing the people in and engaging with you. Because sometimes those trade shows can go, or they can be very long if you're just sitting there um, behind the, the table and no engagement. Um, I will say something about sitting, and it is true. I take chairs away when I see people are sitting 
<laughs> not engaging, I will, the, the chairs will disappear. And therefore you have to stand up and look like you're an approachable person. You're not checking your phone or your emails. I'm not saying that that's why I take away the phone, uh, the chairs, but there was a year that I took the chairs away from our staff and they were, they were a little surprised, but man, you really inc can increase the engagement when you two are standing there. And if, especially if the attendees have had a long day on their feet, um, the staff have a long day on their feet um, as well. All right, next slide, please. And if you think of more as we're going through these, or if you see something that jogs your memory, go ahead and keep typing it in the chat box. Tani. D, I might, <clears throat> excuse me, I might add something about the um, the chairs and the tables. Usually we go in and we push the tables as, as far back as we can and create a, a booth space that people walk into. And then they're not standing out into the aisleways um, while we're talking with them, but also it keeps us up. If we need a chair to sit on the side until somebody comes up, you know, we usually would allow that, but just that might be a tip rather than even giving everybody the opportunity to sit behind the table. <laughs> they don't really have a chance. So yeah, the other <laughs> thing that we have used, and we learned this from NAP as well, is that when we have those um, accessibility chairs, like the sit stand chair, or mm -hmm. if you can take some of these props with you, those make great chairs that you're sitting in. Then somebody goes, oh, well, look at you sitting on that stool or something. And so, yeah. Right, right. That's a good All right. Idea. So in Kansas, these are some of the icebreakers that we've used in the past. Um, actually, I never did this one with the um, photo op, but I always thought this was a great idea because we could have put the farm show on it, put agribility, and people could um, either take pictures themselves and post them, or we could um, get their permission and put them on social media just to show that people were there at the show. And so that's always just kind of a fun way to engage with people. Um, the unique gardening tools. This was actually at a show and we had them all out kind of away out of our booth since we were outside um, sitting on a side by side. But I always had a tendency to grab the pitchfork one and hold it. And that is from Green Heron Tools and they're for they're designed for women. They're called hers. And so they're very different. They have a um, you know bigger handle at the top. So I usually like show it putting, you know, with my hands on it has, um, it's very ergonomic. So people would often stop by and ask me or, you know, go, that's a huge potato fork got there, you know, but that, that was always a, a good opening to, to talk with somebody. And so I especially liked having something or a device in my hands. It kind of helps me because I talk with my hands a lot too. So then I actually had something to explain to somebody and then we can go from there. Um, into other conversations. Um, one of the other things that we did was um, my sister has this chocolate chili recipe. And so I made these um, recipe cards and, you know, I would just hand them out and say, would you like a chocolate chili recipe? Good chocolate chili. So, you know, and I was like, it's really good. You just have to try it. And of course, then I had agribility information on there and how to contact us. And I think Laura told me she made this chili last week and it was delicious. So I have a good testimonial there. And this is really good for the fall. And you could do anything, any time of year. Um, I know Ohio talked about doing some of their special candies. Um, the Buckeye candy would be a really good one. Anything that people can hang on to and take home is just something different. And we also did the spinning wheel. I usually did this with some type of trivia. And so, um, as you can see here on the, on the right is, would you like to play state trivia and they're like state trivia. And I would have a combination of different types of questions about the state of Kansas, about agribility. And usually I would go, oh, I have to tell you a little bit about, about agribility first so that you can maybe get some of these questions right. And I would just let them draw out of a stack. And so it was just kind of fun. We had candy for prizes and it just kind of got the conversation started. And the other thing here I wanna mention is to visit other vendors. And so I would usually take some brochures around and just go talk to other vendors. Hey, I'm Tawny with Kansas Agribility and just wanted to share the, some information with you. And you just never know who you're gonna contact. And then they have your information if they ever wanna circle back. And you can take their card as well because you just never know that person that you might be talking to. Go, oh yeah, I just saw that over two aisles over. And I think it's just a great way to network. 
and with other people at the event and also just assist the people that are attending. Oh, you're muted. I have a very chatty elderly cat here today and I don't need her joining. So I keep muting myself. So I might just, I think she's sleeping by now. She's been up for 10 minutes. That's long enough. Uh, so some of the icebreakers that Pennsylvania's had, it's a little hard to tell, but if you look at it, the um, I think that's Kendra in the upper left. She They've got a big um, metal bucket full of soil and I believe they're using a stand and plant. So it, like a, it's a long tube with a kind of a beak at the end of it. You squeeze it and you can pick up dirt and then you can drop seeds down through it. So that's what it looks to me like they're using. So she's showing how to use that. On the right side, it's uh, right picture is Abby talking to someone. They've got a great looking display. Uh, bottom left is Kendra standing in that tractor, probably at farm aid. And then Abby on the right. And Tony, I think you said that they had actually used an old television monitor and framed it with wood. It's beautiful, but then it would be able to flip through and show PowerPoint slides or something, but it's very rustic looking. Oh, my back one. So that, and then some of the things that they also said some good opening questions or what brings you out today? How old are the kids? How long have you been farming? And then go around and see the event. What are others doing? So that's a good way to get ideas of what to do next time. Last year during our, our really um, memorable farm science review, we were in a tent with 4-H and we're not going to be able to test to touch that because we're not actually doing experiments that make things smoke or blow up. But I mean, their engagement is amazing. What other vendors are there? Like Tawny said, you never know who you're going to make a connection with and what are the networking or partnership opportunities. And it's always time to change things up. What's something new? How can you keep it fresh and what's unexpected? So what are some ways that you see others doing that? And what can you do to always, we're always trying to improve. We never want to have the same show twice. And Oh boy, it's jumpy. Um, some Ohio icebreakers. So these are from this year's Farm Science Review. On our far, on our upper left, we have vendor demos. So that's Propel Doors Ohio. They have a um, door that opens side to side and she'll sit there with it. Heather will sit there with it and hit the button and it opens and closes and people are very surprised by that. But it's a really nice door and we, they, she will explain you know, if a farmer has trouble getting off a tractor on their own, whether they're mobile or they need to have a, a lift to take them off, this stops them from having to get down, open the door, drive and get back on. The next one over, something we're especially proud of, thank a fundraiser. So Rachel and I are holding a check there for $4,645 that the guy, um, D's on, our, on the far left as you're facing it, the guy next to her in the jeans and the black jacket is Austin. And right behind him is Kevin. They run a charity bike ride in Hardin County, Northwest Ohio. It's called Cursive Ohio. If you've ever seen an Ohio State football game, and I'm sure you all have, our marching band spells out Ohio in script. So they weren't allowed to use the phrase script Ohio. So they spell out Cursive Ohio on the county roads. And the bike route does spell that out. Um, so this is, he's been doing this for six years, but last year and this year, the years that he's been sponsoring, Ohio Agribility, his family's there, then my colleagues, Rachel and Randy. And it, it's amazing. He's an alumni from our college. He took classes from D. So we are so grateful. And he's so grateful that we're so excited about it. It's, it's a really big deal for us to have that fundraiser every year. Um, using a prize wheel to teach them something. The lower left photo is my colleague, Rachel. And you can see some of our assistive tech on the very far right of it. There's a black metal structure. It has a red pad on the top of it. That's a high top creeper. You can use that to climb up over it and you lay on that red pad and then you can reach down into your vehicle and work on your vehicle with having, having to support yourself with your arm or your upper body. But we had trivia, we had ag safety questions, Ohio agriculture, food, assistive technology, Ohio agribility, and two topics on fitness and stretches. So you can kind of see behind Rachel, we had posters and we'd say, okay, you got fitness and stretches, pick a stretch up there and show me how to do it. And then we'd explain, you know, while you're farming, we want you to stop. And the, of course the teenagers would all say, I don't need to stretch. Hey, but is your dad stiff? Does he get, yeah. Well, what makes you think you're not going to get stiff? 
It's because you're 16. I get it. Um, very bottom picture is Marty. That is Life Lifts. You can kind of, you may not be able to see the logo on that, but that is Life Life Essentials, Life Lifts. And the woman up in that lift chair is actually Ginger. She is our state vocational rehabilitation liaison. So she came out to spend the day with us and we said, you got to get in the life in the lift chair, Ginger. It's great. And I was in it next day for um, video for an assistive tech certificate, but those, those lifts, boy, they attract people, but those spinning prize wheels, they are, they're a siren song for kids. They all come to it. They all get one piece of candy, but we make them work for it, but it's a great way to get them to interact rather than them silently walking in, picking up a brochure and leaving. They have to interact. And I mean, they earn a piece of candy, but it's good. So Maine uses several different types of icebreakers that are really interesting. Um, we were talking about themes earlier and the one on the left is great for fall. They have this skeleton. Um, we weren't exactly sure how they use it, but I think it's mainly mobility and assistive technology. Um, I'm sorry, occupational therapy would be able to use it to show different movement. And uh, not only that, it's going to draw people in, right? Having a skeleton there. And on the, on the upper right, I love this idea because they have a couple um, different posters. They have a male and a female. And so if you can see over on the right, it says place a dot on the spot where it hurts. And so, you know, people are always willing to <laughs> tell you what hurts, right? And so they go up and they, you know, on the shoulder, well, you know, what are you doing? What are, is there some repetitive issues that you're having? And then we could help them figure out maybe some AT that they could utilize to help and reduce any future injury and maybe just, just, you know, in general life type of things. I think that's really important. And so that's a great way to interact. I think they also have one that's on a board that stands out more outside their booth. So I love that idea. And then they have their um, little guy down on the left that's bending. And so he's showing the proper way to bend and lift. And you, um, I would think that'd be really interesting for people as well. And they're so creative. They did their little pumpkin carving with a little agribility green man. So they do a great job with outreach. So some of the engaging gadgets and um, other things that we usually have in our booth, this um, one here in the upper left, this is a single handed gate opener. And so we had some guys in our shop here build that for me. And it's always a great job. People always want to come over and see what it is and try it. And so it is, it's, it's just, you can open that gate with one hand. And so they, they get an idea of, you know, I didn't even know there was anything out there like that. And so it, it makes a difference and it brings people into the booth and they engage and then you're able to start talking with them. Um, same with the ergonomic hand tools. They're shaped very different than the typical ones that you might find at a home and garden store. And people really like to pick them up and you can show how you can um, use these versus something with more of a straight handle because they're more ergonomic. And everybody loves life essentials and life lifts, right? So um, we actually had them come on campus and do a demonstration um, for our engineering students here. Bill was going through Kansas. Um, he visited one of our customers and then stopped at the university. So we got some good press. That's actually one of the reporters from the television station. So um, also um, on the lower left here is a saddle with a back support. And this is very unique. Um, people always come up and ask us about this. And this is um, for a therapeutic riding facility. And, you know, we don't usually let people sit on it, but they can look at it and kind of check it out. So I think it's more about having something out there where people um, find different than what they typically see, and especially what they might see differently from the event that you're at. And on the right, that is, um, we teamed up with our student group here that is a tractor team, the quarter scale tractor team. So they brought their tractor and um, they, you know, there's some students stood around so that they could visit with people. And I mean, if you've, if you've been in agribility long enough or anything else um, similar, we know that a lot of times it's the women that, um, and a couple that we need to talk to because usually that farmer guy will just walk right by. So this was actually a really good 
team up with these guys because the men would stop and talk to the quarter sale tractor team. And then she would come talk to us and we could explain what we were all about. And then they'd kind of meet up and walk away. It's like, oh, well, this was about that. And this was about that. So um, I found it really interesting. And it was a great, um, great show that we had that that time that we did that. So um, I also there's a root slayer. That's just a different tool that sometimes I would kind of hang on to and use. And then this is a sticky note pad. It doesn't look like it's any big deal, but the way that we use it is as we're talking to somebody and we might want to tell them those are radius hand ergonomic hand tools and where they can get them, or we write it on that sticky note pad and we give them the whole pad. So they take that home with them. They have our information, they can get a hold of us, and we've already we've given them some information to take home. So it's just something that our nonprofit group used, and I always found it really great to to hand those out. And um, people always want the little takeaway. They Sometimes they won't take a brochure, but they'll take something like that. And Maine has um, some really unique um, audience engagement. And the one on the upper left here, and we talked about this with Ohio State does a little bit different with some, some jars. But basically, you know, what stretches you out on the farm? And this is a great icebreaker and a way to engage with people. So, of course, all these elements affect farmers and ranchers. Um, the weather, you know, is it money? Is it equipment? Um, maybe your facilities? Is it, um, I got laws and regulations, livestock? If anybody has livestock, you know that they get stressed out by their livestock. So, um, you know, the, the family, the crops, that type of thing. So people can go up and then that's a really good way to start engaging. I believe Ohio State has something similar and they put um, corn, like dried corn into different jars. And then you can kind of get a gauge um, throughout your show where the stress levels are. And um, on the right, it was um, sharing a tip about farming and gardening. And then they would enter a raffle um, or a drawing and a chance to win, maybe <laughs> um, whatever is legal in your state would be a good thing to check out before you um, call something like a prize or a raffle if you're giving something away. And then here in the lower left, this is um, something else that they did, but they have a, a man figure here and they used, the, I guess they didn't want to put it on the guy itself. So these were... Um, yeah, I think it says the same thing, but you know, what are people concerned about balance, mobility? I mean, those are different. They're not, you know, what hurts, but it's a little bit different way to start a conversation. As well as on the right, they utilize just sticky notes. I mean, this is, would be super simple. And then people can see what other, you know, kind of what other people are going through too. They're not alone and they have different categories here. So these are just ways to break the ice and start telling people more about your program. So in Ohio, um, some of the things we do, again, the prize wheel and the activities, you can see that there's some people sitting and relaxing because it's not just the person doing this, the prize wheel. There's always a crowd that comes in with them. The thing is loud, so it draws a crowd. And you can kind of tell, depending on what monitor you're looking at this on, um, my colleague Rachel is up there doing a side bend with a couple of kids. So we had all ages from little kids. If they got fitness, I would say, Bend down and touch your toes. That was good enough. Bigger kids, I wanted a little more from them. Um, but Rachel's doing a side bend up there and we've got a couple watching and some others walking around. But it really it really draws them in. Um, asking vendors to demo their projects. There again is Marty with Life Lifts and Ginger on the lift. But when as soon as you go out and start using that, people stop and watch. Some of them are a little braver. They want to get in. It's a little intimidating that um, you can see behind her, there's a yellow seat kind of facing out towards Marty, that darn thing makes you feel like it's going to tip you off of it because it tilts forward a little bit. So that one's definitely more intimidating than, um, a little more frightening than the life lift to, to ride, but it lifts you up and puts you onto a, like a big lawnmower or something. Um, show your displays to the media down in the bottom left. That is Mark on the right in the blue polo. Well, I guess they're both in blue polos. And the hat is Mark from K&M Manufacturing. We had put together a tractor display. We'd worked with um, k m to put together kind of an evolution of the tractor seat. And you can see on the very far left, 
there's a metal, it's a bar stool, but a metal seat that's just that metal pan tractor seat. And then he had two different tractor seats there with different types of suspension. Um, one was super fancy, more comfortable than my office chair, but it got people, people stopped and they saw that and they sat down. Oh, this is nice. And it gave him a little chance to talk to them. He's also got a handrail there, but the man that he's talking to that's not wearing a hat is Ty Higgins. He's our Ohio Farm Bureau Director of Communications. So he'd actually come over to, to record a virtual state fair introduction for us. He and I are old family friends. I grew up down the street from his parents and grandparents. Um, so he came over and I said, hey, while you're here, would you, would you look at our tractor seat? And we could just do a little, a little thing there. And he's just such a nice guy who was willing to do that. But show that if you know media are coming around, show them everything you've got. Keep them there as long as you can. And then on the right side is the raised garden bed for presentations and displays. Actually, actually at my house, full of my overgrown herbs last year. But we have another one of these right now. It's nice and empty and clean, but I have taken that. We had it at FSR. I took it over when I did a gardening presentation. And then Tuesday of this week, I took it with me um, to a master gardeners meeting and showed that. And they loved it because it's one thing to talk about raised beds. It's another thing to say, see how comfortable this is at my height. I don't have to bend down and get into it. So things like that really, really make a difference. Uh, Pennsylvania, some of the things that they do, they have mobility devices. So that top left is Abby with a motorized scooter showing someone how that works. The middle one, protect your hands or using the right type of gloves for the task. So you can have a mobility device, which is pretty expensive. You can have a pegboard with some gloves on it because you've got anti-vibration gloves, grippy gloves. We have some lift gloves that have hooks that you're still carrying it, but your fingers aren't doing the hard work. I mean, that's a fairly inexpensive and easy display to put together. Ergonomic hand tools. We all love to show off our gardening tools because the farmers like to garden too. A lot of them do. Um, and then on the bottom, they've got assistive technology displays, place tools in a visible spot. So they've got a table with a lot of different tools on it there. I see a stand and plant, a garden kneeler. Um, it looks like some different handles for your, I'm not sure what that blue and white one is. That's interesting, but quite a few different things. And then the center picture also is just another table with that. I see some hammers on there, some of the grips that you can put on your tool handles or rakes or shovels to make them more ergonomic and easier to hold. And then the last one is health, oh, went too far. Last one is health services, which is also something they do at Farm Science Review, not, not agribility, but another, the, the medical college. They do blood pressure screenings, audio, um, hearing tests, They've got concussion information, agribility information. It's a great way to slide into that. If there is a health thing going on, it's easy and it's not, you know, try to slide it in with the blood pressure checks or the hearing or the vision or what have you, whatever it takes, get in there. That is the end of our presentation. So does anybody have any questions or have any ideas that we haven't shared that you could share with us? And that's our group up there when we presented it at um, NTW. There's Dick from Maine, Lonnie, D, me, and Kendra. There was a question or a comment uh, previously about staffing help from Wanda Merritt, and she suggested asking your county master gardener extension coordinator. She says, we love to get asked to help in all sorts of county activities. Definitely. And uh, from our perspective here in Indiana, I, we always try to ask our advisory team. We've got um, more than 20 people actually in total on the advisory team. But um, for example, for our state fair, which covers like 17 days, um, we need as many people as possible. So we, we uh, frequently get at least a few of those people to, to cover some of the shifts there. And I might add to that a little bit um, about from the master gardener point of view, I think anytime you go to a county to do um, a presentation or you have an exhibit, if you can have somebody there local from your extension department or extension office, they're going to know the people that are there locally. And so that that person is even a draw to your booth. And then you can introduce agribility to them because they just come over to talk to the community member that they know. So um, there's a lot of 
Uh, and respect is also built from introducing you to agribility through somebody that you know as well. I'd mentioned earlier that we have um, farm and garden handouts. I put a link to our website to the um, resources page in the chat. And then this is our farm handout. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. It's something that we started making a few years ago. The QR code may or may not work. It works when I put it on there, but I find a few days later. So those aren't always the greatest, but we have quite a few, quite a few of these pieces of equipment that we take as display. And I always make sure I put up a note that says these products are not endorsed, sponsored, or promoted by Ohio Agribility. We don't get anything. If someone goes and buys one of these, we will never know it. We will never get a kickback for it. But it's really helpful, um, especially at Farm Science Review. People come up and say, like you can see this easy deck step ladder on the top row. We have that attached to a to a wagon trailer that Dee brings in. And last year, that thing brought more people into our tent. It was it saved the show for us because a lot of people were and, and not people that don't have a mobility issue. They just really liked it. So we would take off the handout, we'd circle it and give it back to them. Then they'd taken away our phone number, our website and all these different pieces of equipment. So we did that this year. Somebody came in wanting to know about the high top creeper or the light ranger, what have you. And we would just circle it. I try to update it a couple times a year. I go through and I check the links to make sure they're still working update the prices if necessary, but I always say price could be different, but it's really helpful to have these. And then we also have a gardening one and that is an extremely, um, let me see if I know I'm changing the page. We have a gardening one and it's extremely popular. I do a lot of gardening with arthritis presentations and I, I make sure that they have this handout before we start. And I can say the top row here, the radius tools is what I'm talking about and what I'm passing around right now. And here's an easy squeeze spray novel, spray nozzle. I'm passing that around right now. And it's just helpful for them because when they go home, then they'll think, what was that seat cushion? Oh, there it is right there. And they can, I mean, I always tell them, go to your local nursery, unless you really love Amazon, but I'd rather you go to your local nursery and try to find some of these things. But they're a really nice way to get our names and websites and little information about us into their house. And I think it's just helpful to have those. I also have a kitchen one that we did for a webinar, but it's not nearly as, as robust as the others are. Laura, I did have another question for you. And also I just want to remind everybody to please uh, visit the webinar evaluation survey that I put the link in the chat for. Um, your spitting wheel, prize wheel, uh, looked pretty, pretty robust. Is that something you own or do you rent that or how did you come by that? I can answer that one. Several 20 years ago, maybe, and that's literally how old it is. Um, we had some extra dollars that a local agency gave us to use for promoting ag safety and health. And we didn't really want to buy um, coats or hats or t-shirts or things. So we're like, well, what else can we do for promotion? And so this is an actual riverboat spinning wheel company that made this for us. And it has mirrors and it's the, it, oh my gosh, it, it has really served its, its, well, it breaks down into, um, let's see, it breaks down into three pieces and it really does need to be transported by a pickup truck because it won't fit in the back of an SUV, no matter how, I mean, that's how big the, the circle is. It's huge. And it's a floor model, but it's it's manageable. One person can assemble it and take it down. So if you're, you know, I've seen the little tabletop spinning wheels, um, but if you have an extra $2,500 or so, um, that's really how much, but they did a great job. Um, and then we can change out the sectors. We just have Velcro on there. So um, we use it at a lot of ag, um, Ag, College of Ag events. It's not only our agribility. Um, well, this is the first year agribility actually used it, but. And we will be using it every year after. And somebody <laughs> asked her to borrow it. And she said, no, it's, a, it's already been spoken for. And I said, we're never not have. It's so loud. That noise still haunts my nightmares. But you know what? It brings them in. I don't care. They, the parent will say, he heard this three blocks over. I believe that he did because it's loud. But boy, does it bring them in. And then once you've got them in there, at least teach them one thing. 
We taught them, you know, this is what assistive technology is and you carry some of it, a very powerful piece of assistive technology around in your pocket, makes them think. But that thing is, that thing is great. I we wish also, we yeah, we also use, um, on my farm stress team, we, we have large dice that they can spin that, you know, or, or roll. And then similar to the, the spinning wheel, when you land on a category, if you roll a six, then you get a question on livestock. If you roll a, you know, a two. And so the big yard dice are fun to use. And also a, a large Plinko board. Um, where that those chips fall. So if you've got some folks that can build things for you or a company that can manufacture, those little props are fun to use. Thanks for asking. I'll have to check in the yard dice. I've never heard of that before. So yeah, they're great big square ones, kind of like jarts or um, it's just different than cornhole, but they're Great big. Somebody tried to walk away with um, one of them at our at Farm Science Review just this past year at that table. They and the lady kind of got upset. She thought those were giveaways. We're like, no, these are yeah. people. And that is one thing. I'm glad you brought that up because um, people are always trying to walk away with our hand tools and things. And it's why why would you think that thing is? So I keep saying I'm just going to get some neon pink tape and wrap it around it and say property of agribility don't take me something but d i remember you lost your little you had a little um small model of a grain cart and it had barbie and ken in it or something somebody took the dolls yeah. i think that was a prank i don't think they really thought that was a giveaway but they'll try to st no that's and i and i do worry that even when i do just a, a presentation a workshop i I don't have a checklist, even though I should, but people give them back, but they do try to walk away with them at these shows. I don't, I don't know why. No, it's not a, not a giveaway, but. Thank you everyone for attending and participating. And um, thank you, Paul, for hosting us. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dee and, and Laura and Tawny for presenting today. Definitely some good information and definitely one that's going to be good to archive on our website for other people to check out. I learn something every time I uh, hear this presentation. So it's a good good place to steal some, steal some ideas. Um, so uh, again, please uh, let us know if you would, uh, oh, excuse me, please uh, visit the uh, evaluation survey and uh, we will be archiving this, this on our website. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having us.